Hong Kong Standard belonged to a large corporation, hmm. publishing corporation. It was called Chinese language patrang lakko ande. Abey ra Chinese patrang lakka pro Taiwan hai jinda, hmm. pro Kominta. Hong Kong Standard le nyan jerdan ni session, anu mumbey thodengin thodan do. Uh, I took a line. There is only one China. Hmm. There cannot be two China, Nationalist Republic China and uh, People's Republic China. My view was that only one China. That China is mainland China, hmm. on the mainland. Hmm. Communist China. That is the China. The other is Taiwan. <laughs> But if you ask me, who, in my view, is a good candidate for Prime Minister, hmm. I would say Indira Gandhi. Hmm. Indira Gandhi? Why? Nehru's, because she is Nehru's daughter. Mm. Indira Gandhi at that time was the information minister. Mm. She, he said she is a junior minister. I said, yeah, not uh, because she is a minister or not because she is a Nehru's daughter. Mm. I said she represented in my mind the youth of India. When she declared emergency, I was already editor in chief at that time. Mm. I wrote, I think, if I remember correctly, about five editorials in a week or two, mm. highly critical of Indira Gandhi mm. and uh, emergency. To, to, I said to Sham, you tell me one thing: what is common between you and me? Mm. You coming from Bihar, I'm from Kerala. What is common between us? I said we don't dress the same way, we don't speak the same language, and even our curry is different. <laughs> The lady wants to know, meaning Mrs. Gandhi, why Hong Kong Standard, with an Indian as the editor-in-chief, and another Indian as the number two. My number two was also a Malayali, mm. uh, called Gopinath. He passed away recently. Um, why are you anti-Indian? Mrs. Gandhi has declared an election. What do you think will happen? He asked me. So I said, uh, "Sir, Mr. Mehta is the All India Radio correspondent. He knows India better than I do. <laughs> Ask him." He said, "No, complete victory. <laughs> Thumbs down, victory." He <laughs> said. As the governor passed, I said, "What sort of bullshit was that?" Logam mudu and tandai te divide an autocrats and democracies. Hmm. What is likely to happen in Southeast Asia, in in the South China Sea, whether it will become a war between autocracy and democracy, I am not quite sure, but the possibility is there. Mm-hmm. I have done two things. Marcos interviewed the president, former president mm-hmm. Marcos, palace, Malacca palace. So he became very friendly with me, and uh, uh, I had developed a good rapport with the Philippine government, although. I was critical of the government. This shift is not an American Samaraj, but it is not an economic, political, centralized American Samaraj. It is a shift in China. 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 Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? ഒടുവിൽ ഞാൻ സെഞ്ചുറിയിൽ ജോലി ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന സമയത്താണ് ഗോപാലൻ അറിയിച്ചു അയാൾ അയാളെന്ന് അവിടെ പോയിട്ട് ഹീ ജോയിൻഡ് ഫാറീസ് ആൻഡ് എക്കണോമിക് റിവ്യൂ അയാളുടെ അവിടെ ഒരു പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ എഡിറ്ററായിട്ട് ചേർന്ന് പിന്നെ അയാൾ അസിസ്റ്റൻ്റ് എഡിറ്ററായി അത് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് അയാൾ അവിടെ നിന്ന് വിട്ടിട്ട് അന്ന് ഏഷ്യ മാഗസിൻ എന്നും പറഞ്ഞൊരു ഒരു വീക്ക്ലി മാഗസിൻ തുടങ്ങുന്നുണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ സപ്ലിമെൻറ്റ് ടു ഡെയിലി ന്യൂസ് പേപ്പേഴ്സ് ഇറ്റ് സർക്കുലേറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് ടൈംസ് ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ ഇൻ ഇന്ത്യ ആൻഡ് Bangkok Post in Thailand and uh, Strait Times in Singapore. I was inserted in the same way. I was like, I was like, I was like, I can introduce you to the review. Mm. Then it is uh, your luck. Mm. Whether you get a job or not. So, I was like, 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 I was able to get a uh, ഇവിടെ തിരുവനന്തപുരം അങ്ങനെ മരിച്ചു അങ്ങനെ റേഡിയോ ഓൾ ഇന്ത്യ റേഡിയോയിൽ ഉള്ള ഒരാളുണ്ടായിരുന്നു മലയാളി അങ്ങേരെ ഞാൻ ഇട്ടുള്ള അടുപ്പായിരുന്നു ഈ മലയാളി അസോസിയേഷനൊക്കെ വഴി അങ്ങേര് റെക്കമെൻഡ് ചെയ്ത് ചില ആളുകളെ അണ്ടർ സെക്രട്ടറിയോ 
ഗവൺമെൻറ്റിലെ സെക്രട്ടറി ലെവൽ ആളെ റെക്കമെൻഡേഷൻ റെക്കമെൻഡേഷൻ എടുത്തിട്ട് എനിക്ക് പാസ്പോർട്ട് വേഗം കിട്ടി ഞാൻ അങ്ങ് അവിടെ പോയി അവിടെ ചെന്നിട്ട് എനിക്ക് ഫാറിസ്റ്റിൻ്റെ എക്കണോമിക് റിവ്യൂയിൽ ജോലിയും കിട്ടുകയും ചെയ്തു അവിടെ നിന്നാണ് ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ യഥാർത്ഥത്തിലുള്ള റൈറ്റിംഗ് ജേണലിസം തുടങ്ങുന്നത് അവിടെ ഞാനൊരു ഒന്നര വർഷം ജോലി ചെയ്തു അപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് ഹോങ്കോങ്ങിലെന്ന് ബേസ് ചെയ്ത് മാഗസിൻ വീക്ക്ലി മാഗസിൻ വെൻ ഐ ജോയിൻഡ് ജസ്റ്റ് ബിഫോർ ഐ ജോയിൻ ദി എഡിറ്റർ ചേഞ്ച്ഡ് ആൻഡ് ദ നമ്പർ വൺ അസിസ്റ്റൻ്റ് എഡിറ്റർ അറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ആൺ മാൻ ബൈ ദ നെയിം ഡെറക് ഡേവിസ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് മാൻ ഹി വാസ് എ ഫോമർ ബ്രിട്ടീഷ് ഡിപ്ലോമാറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ഹി വാസ് ഫോം പിന്നെ ഹി വാസ് ഇൻ ദി ബ്രിട്ടീഷ് ഇൻ്റലിജൻസ് ഏജൻസി വിച്ച് വിച്ച് കെയിം ടു നോ മച്ച് മച്ച് ലേറ്റർ അയാള് ഇന്ന ഹി ആഡ് എ പൊളിറ്റിക്കൽ വിഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഹി ഈസ് ദ വൺ ഹു റിയലി developed that magazine into an international quality magazine okay. international respected magazine nanude chernu pishe appulteke pakistan times inde oru correspondent hong kong il undayirunnu east mm-hmm. pakistan nalla yallana mm-hmm. sm ali adippa marichu poi angere avudunna bangkok post inde managing editor aayittu ekku juli kitti so ayalu hong kong inde bangkok il poi njangale thammil valare adippa irunnu അവിടെ പോയിട്ട് അയാൾ അവിടെ ചെന്ന് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഹീ റോട്ട് എ ലെറ്റർ ടു മീ ഐ സെറ്റ് ഐ നീഡ് സം ഗുഡ് എഡിറ്റേഴ്സ് സോ ക്യാൻ യു റിസൈൻ ഫ്രം ദ റിവ്യൂ ആൻഡ് കം ആൻഡ് ജോയിൻ മീ ഹിയർ എനിക്കിത് ഫസ്റ്റ് ഓപ്പണിംഗ് ടു വർക്ക് ഇൻ എ ഡെയിലി ന്യൂസ് പേപ്പർ ഐ വസ് നോട്ട് ഗോയിങ് ടു ലൂസ് ഇറ്റ് ഐ സെറ്റ് ഇയേഴ്സ് ഐ ഹവ് കമ്മിങ് ആൻഡ് ഐ വെൻ ദർ ബട്ട് ഐ കുൺ ലാസ്റ്റ് ദർ വെരി ലോങ് ബിക്കോസ് ഈ വീസ കിട്ടാൻ താമസമാണ് ഇത് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ഇന്ത്യൻസിന് ഒരുപാട് ഇന്ത്യൻസ് ഇതായാലുണ്ട് ഉണ്ടോണ്ട് നമുക്ക് വർക്ക് വീസ കിട്ടില്ല അപ്പോൾ ഒരു രണ്ടാഴ്ച കഴിയുമ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് യു വിൽ ഹാറ്റ് ലീവ് ദ കൺട്രി ദൻ കം ബാക്ക് അഗെയിൻ വിത്ത് അനദർ ടൂറിസ്റ്റ് വീസ അങ്ങനെ അങ്ങനെ യാത്ര ചെയ്യാൻ തുടങ്ങി സോ യു ആർ ലിവിങ് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് യുവർ സൂട്ട് കേസ് ഓൾ ദ ടൈം അതുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ അതിൽ നിന്ന് രാ ഞാനൊരു കൊല്ലം ജോലി ചെയ്തത് അത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ രാജു വെച്ച് ഞാൻ തിരിച്ച് ഹോങ്കോങ്ങിലേക്ക് വന്നു ഹോങ്കോങ് സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡിൽ എപ്പോഴാണ് ഹോങ്കോങ് സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡിൽ ഒരു വേക്കൻസി ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു എ ജൂനിയർ സബ് എഡിറ്റർ so i joined as a sub editor on the night desk the mm. copy editor and it then the pakyathine pettan vittu enikku avadun promotion kittan thodangi ene promotion kittan thodangi nu vachale avade evade engil oru 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 shortage undengil edu department shortage enne angottu vidu business section avade poi it's a big naale ഒരാഴ്ച അവിടെ ചെയ്യുക പിന്നെ ഒരാഴ്ച ഇപ്പുറത്ത് ചെയ്യുക ഇങ്ങനെ ഇങ്ങനെ തന്നെ മാറ്റിക്കൊണ്ടിരുന്നു ബേസിക്കലി സംബഡി സെറ്റിന് സം പീപ്പിൾ ടു മീ യുനോ ഐ എം യുനോ എൻ അൺവാണ്ടഡ് സ്പെയർ വീൽ ദി ആർ പുഷിങ് മീ അറൗണ്ട് ആൻഡ് മേ ബി ദ ചീഫ് സബ് എഡിറ്റർ ഡിറ്റ് നോട്ട് ലൈക്ക് മീ ആൻഡ് സോ ഹി വാസ് ട്രൈൻ ടു മേക്ക് ലൈഫ് ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ട് ഫോർ മീ സോ ഐ വിൽ ഗോ ഐ വിൽ റിസൈൻ ആൻഡ് ഗോ ഐ ഡിറ്റ് നോട്ട് ഡു ഇറ്റ് ഐ ടുക്ക് ഓൾ ദിസ് ആസ് എ ചാൻസ് ടു ലേൺ ന്യൂ തിങ്സ് so i worked in every dip, every editorial department except sports okay i had nan and a odivil nan a business editor and a oru oru philippine gari oru stree aanu business editor avrude sub editor aayitt kuda cheyana nan avrude avaru kadagalu nan aanu edit cheythu page ok undaki kekkuna appo avaru ennittu adu raju vechittu she was joining an american stock brokerage house mm. merrill lynch fears mm. fenner and smith uh, so she was going as a stock broker but mm. one time they are going to replace her now so she told the management okay and add crown and and i will be the right person to do that thing adinu munbu thana naan chair aa patrathe cheyumbodhekke അതിൻ്റെ ഉടമസ്ഥൻ പബ്ലിഷർ തന്നെ ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ ചെയ്തു ഞാൻ ചേരുന്നത് ദ ജൂനിയർ മോ സബ് എഡിറ്റർ അതേ സമയത്ത് തന്നെ ഐ എം ഐ എം ഓൾസോ ദി എഡിറ്റോറിയൽ റൈറ്റർ ഓഫ് ദി പേപ്പർ യുനോ സോ ഐ എം ദ ജൂനിയർ മോ എഡിറ്റോറിയൽ എംപ്ലോയി ബട്ട് ഐ റൈറ്റ് ദി ഗൈഡ് ദി എഡിറ്റോറിയൽ പോളിസി ഓഫ് ദി പേപ്പർ റൈറ്റിംഗ് ദി എഡിറ്റോറിയൽ ബിക്കോസ് ദ പബ്ലിഷർ ഹാഡ് എ ഫസ്റ്റ് മീറ്റിംഗ് വിത്ത് മീ ആൻഡ് ഐ ഡിസ്കസ് മാറ്റേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻ യു ഹാവ് ക്ലിയർ views on political affairs mm-hmm. particularly vietnam war and you know, south okay. indo china and all that uh, and also china adu edu period aanu that was uh, 
1960s, uh, mid 60s, or okay. 67, 68 onwards. Mm. Uh, I joined the standard in 1967. Okay. Arrived in Hong Kong in 65. Okay. Uh, in China, uh, Hong Kong standard belonged to a large corporation, hmm. publishing corporation. It was a Chinese language. It was a Chinese language. It was pro Taiwan. Hong Kong standard was a I took a line, there is only one China. Hmm. There cannot be two China, Nationalist Republic China and uh, People's Republic China. My view was that only one China, that China is mainland China, hmm. on the mainland. Hmm. Communist China, that is the China. The other is Taiwan. Um, so, that editorial policy therefore began to shift towards... Uh, more independent line. Hmm. Uh, independent in the sense? In the Mumbai very pro Taiwan Okay. Now there is more independent, a, a neutral line okay. with regard to China. As a matter of fact, I have changed my name to an editor. Hmm. Editor is a Chinese scholar. I he wanted to go to England to study law. Hmm. Then my publisher hired an Englishman. Hmm. as an editor, a former correspondent of the Daily Express in London. So he also agreed with that kind of policy. Okay. So he, Hong Kong standard and the master in the Dari Ayalur is so good, the independent newspaper. <laughs> so the policy got established, the independent newspaper. So, I think that I have to say that business editor Philippine Gary Street, Rajiv Chumbrite, I point to be sure as editor, you know, he can do the job, he does everything himself. I have to say business editor at a point. I have to say that I have to business editor. Prathana Patra Paladona change you. Paladona change you. I am business editor and the Galaturu, a Chinese Australian, became the editor in chief. So he published a Ayala Nundangilta name. He Sarkari had to deal in the Nyan Iron. And then as the business editor, I was quite deeply involved with Hong Kong. And I was well known in the business community okay. and also government top levels, they knew that thing. And the byline stories were like, they, they know who writes the editorial. They carry on the Sarkar and the governor or Lord Kenny Ariam. About a kind of meeting in a Kushinikiki, business editor, and I get the Navy political briefing in a Navy. I'm going to do it in the end. As I may say, India Lily Martin and other Kandela. Other Patraming in a guarantee, didn't they? Uh, we, we, that was a, a, a big chapter actually. <laughs> uh, in Dile, since we were in, we follow this independent policy, hmm. um, we didn't have a correspondent in India. Hmm. We didn't have a correspondent anywhere except hmm. in Hong Kong. Oh. Yeah, we have no foreign correspondent. Agencies, agencies. Hmm. We also, apart from news agencies, wire agencies, we also subscribe to New York Times, oh. Washington Post, LA Times. This is what happened. That's why American Patrangal in India was very critical of the American Patrangal in India. At that time, the issue of Ellen Mishra in Bihar was in the jail at TGS George in the jail. At that time, the American Patrangal in critical article was published in the feature page. This is... Nyan Patra the Ran the Umbe Rakan the Guiding Law. Nyan Patra the Rai Kerin Pertake, Indian Commission began to take a very critical eye. The India Colonel Patra the Rapertake in the Mukhi Ratan the Idana Ritapersana. In a commissioner, various commissioners, early days in a, I didn't have a, much of a problem. Hmm. When Lal Bahadur Shastri died hmm. in Tashkent, uh, na, 
the first secretary of the Indian Commission there. We were Hong Kong as a British colony, so our embassy is called a commission. Okay. High Commission is in London. So, Shivaramakrishnan, a Tamil girl, a chap, who was, who was a journalist uh, with the Hindu paper before he joined uh, hmm. Foreign Service. He telephoned me and he said, you know, Prime Minister died in Tashkent and uh, I would like to, to be <coughs> one of the early pe people to sign the condolence book. Hmm. To come in the office in the early mor in the morning should be among the first ten people you sign. Hmm. First one has to be Governor of Hong Kong or uh, ADC of the Governor will sign. Then one or two top community leaders, then you should be one among them to sign that book. So I signed the book and Shiva Ramakrishnan met me there, I signed the book and then Shiva Ramakrishnan said to Noko, let us go and see the <coughs> commissioner and you can express your condolence directly to him. So I went to him and the commissioner invited me to his office, sat there and had coffee. So the commissioner then said to know who, what is happening to our country and you know, what will be our future? <laughs> and he said, no, Mr. Vishnathan, who do you think our leader should be? Uh, who can lead our country? I'm, you know, I am not in that business of <laughs> <laughs> suggesting prime ministers. <laughs> but if you ask me who, in my view, is a good candidate for prime minister, hmm. I would say Indira Gandhi. Hmm. Oh, Indira Gandhi? Why? Nehru's, because she is Nehru's daughter. Mm. Indira Gandhi at that time was the information minister. Mm. She, he said, she's a junior minister. I said, yeah, not uh, because she is a minister or not because she is Nehru's daughter. Mm. I said, she represented in my mind the youth of India. I said, uh, India is run by the independence movement geriatric leaders. <laughs> you know, we need a new leaders to come in. Geriatric should you know, move away and you know, bring up new leaders. Indira Gandhi is the ideal leader for that. Thing. Yeah. And uh, then Kamaraj came into that uh, Moraji Deshai fighting over the position and uh, battle going on. Kamaraj did all the negotiation as the Congress president at that time. And uh, finally, Indira Gandhi was appointed, uh, prime, chosen Prime Minister. Commissioner telephoned me and he said, how did you guess that? <laughs> <laughs> I said, it was not a guessing or anything, it was something I wished. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what it was. Uh, so I was so supportive of Indira Gandhi at that mm -hmm. time. That's why we had to carry it in our hands. What? These Indian people, we had to... Hong Kong Center. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, we report. We okay. report India very well there. Okay. But we didn't have a... India was interest area? Interest area, I don't know. Yeah. But in a, not in details, but okay. we only... Uh, the internationally important issues okay. of India. Okay. You know? Yeah, what happened in Bihar, we reported, because there was a <coughs> lot of corruption and things like okay. that there. Um, we had uh, some report uh, almost every day about India, hmm. you know, particularly feature articles, uh, two, three times a week it happened. Then they began to, Indira Gandhi became Prime Minister later on, and uh, when she declared uh, Ellen Mishra and Bihar, she was before mm. March, the declaration of emergency. When she declared emergency, I was already editor-in-chief at that time. Mm. I wrote, I think, if I remember correctly, about five editorials in... Uh, week or two, mm. highly critical of Indira Gandhi mm. and uh, emergency. Nikhil decided to close, you know, shut down okay. mainstream at that time, okay. instead of submitting to censorship. Mm. IP and? IPA was running. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Indira Gandhi had ordered a journalist, Indian journalist from abroad to be arrested and brought mm. to jail and CGK Reddy was arrested in America somewhere and brought him to jail. That sort of things were happening. And uh, I continued to be reporting and, uh, and writing co editorial commentary critical of uh, Indira Gandhi, or rather emergency. Okay. And one day, the, my, a uh, couple of times, the Indian commissioner telephoned me and talked to me and uh, 
this thing and i said well you know we we are t- stating the fact that is all if you disagree with it you counter that thing hmm. we will publish it what is there some when that uh, sham saran who later hmm. became the hmm. foreign secretary india's foreign secretary uh, he was at that time a chinese language student hmm. in uh, hong kong hmm. so as a result he was a third secretary rank or something in the indian embassy indian commission so sham saran once at uh, the home of bk tiwari who was the indian express correspondent uh, in uh, hong kong mm. and co- also covering china bk tiwari is the nephew of uh, Govind Ballabh Pant who was our home minister under mm. Nehru ne- 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 I had a little to do a little evening in a cocktail party ke bulachu Sham Saran as a language student was also there mm. talked about India and uh, India's diversity something like that issues like that and I always held a critical view uh, quite often for a cocktail debate and <laughs> sarcastic argument and all that uh, I said that there is uh, nothing common mm. between you know Indians I said we are Kerala we are Malayalis we are different <laughs> <laughs> so Sham Saran you know being a foreign <coughs> you know foreign office uh, 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 studying language and uh, he took an issue with me and went into a very serious argument mm. the whole discussion was not serious at all but he turned it into a very serious political debate with mm. me then i got to to i said to sham you tell me one thing what is common between you and me mm. you coming from bihar i'm from kerala what is common between us i said we don't dress the same way we don't speak the same language and even our curry is different <laughs> and how can you say there is something common between you and me I said India's unity is in that diversity. That is what keeps India united. You fail to understand that thing. I said our ability and our nature to argue is India. Mm. You say that no, we should apply completely oblige and we should be subservient. Mm. That's what I said. I said that in the emergency summit, Sham Saran one day telephoned me and said, uh, I want to see you urgently. I have something to talk to you. <laughs> At that evening, you know, when he called me and I was inviting some friends, uh, foreigners and others for a dinner at my house, I said, well, I cannot uh, go anywhere to meet you. I have this thing and if you can come and join us for dinner. He said, I can't join for dinner, but I want to talk to you tonight. Yeah. So he came home. and uh, my my guests were already there and uh, he said okay i said hey, we can talk on the veranda so we went to the balcony and he said um, the lady wants to know meaning mrs gandhi why hong kong standard with an indian as the editor in chief and another indian as the number 2 my number 2 was also a malayali mm. uh called gopinath he passed away recently um why are you anti indian oh anti indian mm. so i told sham you know hong kong standard is not anti indian hong kong standard follows an independent policy as stated under the masthead the independent newspaper we follow that policy and uh, we are critical of indira gandhi and the emergency and uh, we are not uh, attacking india unless indira gandhi thinks that indira is india <laughs> i said i don't i don't agree to that view okay he looked at me and said uh, is that all you have to say i said what else would you expect to hear you came here to deliver a message from her to me and expected an answer i have given the answer you deliver the answer to her Uh, i have nothing more to add to it mm. my paper is not going to change the policy because i am an indian so i am an indian therefore paper become pro indian that's not going to happen 
that uh, election after she called the election british queen queen elizabeth was visiting hong kong mm. and the governor's house <coughs> there was a big celebration party you know and uh, i being the editor of the paper i am naturally invited other foreign correspondents were invited there was a man called meta as the all india radio correspondent meta and i quite often argued on issues because meta being all india radio and he thinks he has an obligation to support the indian government <laughs> Uh, and uh, so the the we were all waiting for the queen to appear and uh, before that the governor of hong kong came he saw me and he said oh india mrs gandhi has declared an election what do you think will happen he asked me so i said uh, sir mr mehta is the all india radio correspondent he knows india better than i do <laughs> ask him he said to no complete victory <laughs> thumbs down victory <laughs> Yeah. Said, as the governor passed, I said, "What sort of bullshit was that?" <laughs> <laughs> governor heard this thing and turned and looked at looked at me. Mm. I learned that uh, Indira Gandhi went through the election. Indira Gandhi lost the election, <laughs> and the day the result, day after or a couple of days after the result came, Bangladesh had become, you know, was opening a. an embassy you know a, a, a diplomatic mission in, in in hong kong i was there and the governor of hong kong was there and meta was there meta saw me and said uh, vishwas up i would take my hat off you if i had a hat but i admire you for for predicting this would happen i said <laughs> I said, Mr. Mehta, we are journalists. You know? We are in the, not in the prediction business. <laughs> I said, it is written everywhere in the in the, in the, in the wall that you know, Mrs. Gandhi cannot win this election <laughs> because Indian people, no matter they have accepted the emergency, they are not so foolish. <laughs> they will not tolerate these sort of things. It's a simple thing. Then, Muraji Desai became prime minister. I was going to somewhere in Europe. Mm. So whenever I go west, I drop by New Delhi for a couple of days, you know, to renew contacts and all that. Madhavan had come back to New Delhi, the mm-hmm. main office. So I arrived there, and uh, um, I called Madhavan on the phone one day, and when I told him, Madhavan was quite, uh, you know, confused about it. So to who you are here? I said yes, and I said to Mr. Madhavan, since I am here, I thought uh, if you are free, I would come by and see you. Mm. So I went to see him in in the in the foreign office. Then I asked him, Is Thomas Abraham is here? Thomas Abraham, I had no Thomas Abraham from Bangkok when I worked there. Mm. He's a diplomat. He was number two to K R Narayan. Narayan okay. was the ambassador at okay. that time, and I knew Narayan and Nikhil introduced me to Narayan. And Narayan and I were became close friends. Okay. And he was uh, when Narayan was ambassador in China, I will telephone him and we talk on the phone mm. from from mm-hmm. Hong Kong and all that. So he said, you know, the, the Tom, Thomas Abraham. I said, yeah. So he called and told Tom. Tom said, I'll be sure he's here. How? Bring him over immediately. So I went to him and met him. And um, that night I was staying with. Uh, a former indian diplomat called p vijay uh, who was uh, he and uh, raghunath uh, raghunath were uh, in china during cultural revolution and the red guards had caught vijay and raghunath and beaten them up and threw them out of china by yeah. saying they are indian spies they are diplomats raghunath had become by the time later on he became ambassador Vijay resigned, so I was staying in Vijay's house in New Delhi. Vijay told Raghunath that I was in town, so Raghu invited me to a drink at his house. When I went there, almost a dozen top foreign officers, all our ambassador level people, are all there. Some of them I knew, some of them I did not. So during that course, a guy who used to be commissioner in hong kong called rangarajan married to an english woman after taking a couple of drinks rangarajan 
looked at me and said, Vishwa, you are a lucky bastard. <laughs> so I said, tell me, what did I do to deserve that kind of qualification? <laughs> <laughs> he said, Mrs. Gandhi fell, it's good for you. So I went through that kind of a problem with India. But it never affected me any, any way at all. <laughs> This incident is connected to current Indian politics. Uh -uh. India is India, and now Modi is India. Modi is India, India is Modi. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Indian media is uh, a political situation. It is a declared emergency. It is not a declared emergency. It is not a declared emergency. I am I am unhappy with the certain political decision and uh, social decision a decision with social impact that the government is taking. Um, but I don't follow the Indian politics that closely okay. now because I live abroad and I know Philippines <laughs> better than I know India these days. <laughs> I write about Philippines. Uh, so, the I think a year or so ago, and I read somewhere that Amit Shah has written that uh, you know Hindi will be hmm. our uh, official language. Yes. Long before that, Amit Shah had uh, issued an instruction. As soon as uh, the Modi government came to power, uh, this uh, everyone secretaries uh, notations on the on the in the file should be written in uh, Hindi. Hmm. Because the uh, Prime Minister can, uh, why can't it in the Hindi? Uh, English in Kali uh, Hindi and I why can't it in the Hindi? Everybody protested at that time. So I thought it went away. But she, Yadatha Alatha, Janadu, Kandu, Yalu Vindam Parendu, Moraji, the Modi himself said uh, the official language is the language of the government. That means, you know, he speaks in B and others speaks in B. And uh, Amit Shah was pushing that line. So I wrote an article and published in the, in the online portal called Asia Sentinel, okay. for which I now write regularly on Philippines. First article was that uh, about uh, this one, which I wrote them free oh. to publish. Uh, my argument was that uh, English is not a foreign language to us. English is one of the official languages. And uh, most Indians communicating in English, you know, a fellow from Kashmir and fellow from Kerala normally talked English. And English has become a sort of a vocabulary among the educated Indians. You know, you and I, we both are Malayalis. It comes natural to us. So language should not be made a, a, a political issue. Language is a communication medium, that's all. Ideas can be political, not the language. So I wrote a very stinging article, a critical article about it, and I said, uh, uh, India, English is the official language in India, like uh, 50 other countries, yes. not only America and uh, Australia and Britain, you know, even Philippines, that is, it is one of our official languages. Most people in the Philippines speak English, not the Galuk. Uh, official business is mostly conducted in English. So, Andhra Kurjian criticized, although also these uh, communal issues here, you know, Muslims you know, wearing a parda or uh, you know, girls being molested and on, on, on religious basis and killed on that basis. I'm very much against it. But, but my vague understanding is Modi government is still making some economic growth for this country. Hmm. And maybe I'm wrong, but I feel that it is making some economic growth. And uh, more recently, Modi government has uh, taken a line particularly with uh, Southeast Asia and South China Sea issues. Um, because the previously 
കോൺഗ്രസ് ഗവൺമെൻറ് ഹാസ് ഓൾവേസ് ബീൻ ആൻറ്റി അമേരിക്കൻ ആൻഡ് ഓ ഗോ അഗൻസ്റ്റ് അമേരിക്ക അവർ അവർ ന്യൂട്രാലിറ്റി ഹാസ് ഗോൺ അബ് ടു ഫാർ ഫ്രം റിയാലിറ്റി സോ ദി ദ ഷിഫ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ഫോറിൻ ഫ്രണ്ട് ഐ എം കംഫർട്ടബിൾ വിത്ത് ദാറ്റ് ഷിഫ്റ്റ് ബട്ട് വാട്ട് ഈസ് ഹാപ്പനിങ് ഡൊമസ്റ്റിക്കലി ഐ എം നോട്ട് അറ്റ് ഓൾ കംഫർട്ടബിൾ വിത്ത് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർലി വി ആർ എ ഹിന്ദു രാഷ്ട്ര വി ആർ നോട്ട് ആൻഡ് വി ഷുഡ് നെവർ ബി ഈ ഈ ഷിഫ്റ്റ് ഉണ്ടല്ലോ ഒരു അമേരിക്കൻ സാമ്രാജ്യത്വം എന്നൊക്കെ നമ്മൾ പറഞ്ഞിരുന്ന എക്കണോമിക് പൊളിറ്റിക്കൽ സെൻട്രലൈസേഷൻ അമേരിക്കൻ അതിനകത്ത് നിന്ന് ഷിഫ്റ്റ് വന്നുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ചൈനയുടെ റോൾ ഇപ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെയാണല്ലോ പറയുന്നത് ഇനി ചൈന നമ്പർ വണ്ണിലേക്ക് വന്നുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് ഒപ്പം ഇന്ത്യ ചൈന റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പും പഴയ മാധ്യമം ഭയങ്കരമായിട്ട് മാറിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കും ഈ അടുത്ത് ചർച്ചയൊക്കെ ഡിപ്ലോമാറ്റിക് ചർച്ച നടന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് എങ്ങനെയാണ് അതിനെ നോക്കിക്കാണുന്നത് ഐ തിങ്ക് ഇന്ത്യ ഇപ്പോഴ് മൂവിങ് ഇൻ ദ റൈറ്റ് ഡിറക്ഷൻ ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് ഏരിയ ബിക്കോസ് ഇഫ് യു സിറ്റ് വെർ ഐ സെറ്റ് ഇൻ ഫിലിപ്പീൻസ് ആൻഡ് ലുക്ക് ഫ്രം ദർ ചൈന ഇസ് ബിക്കമിങ് ആൻ ഇൻക്രീസിംഗ്ലി എ ത്രെഡ് ടു സൗത്ത് ഈസ്റ്റ് ഏഷ്യൻ കൺട്രീസ് നോട്ട് ദാറ്റ് ചൈന വാണ്ട് ടു അറ്റാക്ക് എനി ഓഫ് ദീസ് കൺട്രീസ് ചൈന വാണ്ട് ടു അക്സെപ്റ്റ് China is the number one and uh, you are our vassal states. You know, you are all dependent on us like that. In other words, there was a, immediately after the Second World War, there was an uh, Americans and pro-American countries. Now China want to have China and pro-China countries. So they want Taiwan, you know, Philippines and uh, all other countries there in that role. But in the end of the day, China... ഒരു തെറ്റായ മാർഗത്തിലൂടെ പോകുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ചൈനയ്ക്ക് ഇത്രയും മിലിറ്ററി ആൻഡ് ഇക്കണോമിക് പവർ ഉള്ള സമയത്ത് ചൈന ഒന്നുകൂടെ സോഫ്റ്റ് ലൈൻ ചൈന ഷുഡ് ആ ടേക്കൺ ടു വേഴ്സ് ദീസ് കൺട്രീസ് ഇൻ ദ സെൻസ് യു നോ ഹെൽപ്പ് ദം സപ്പോർട്ട് ദം വിൻ ദം ആസ് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് നോട്ട് സസ്പെക്ട് ദം China has reason to suspect these countries, particularly Philippines. Philippines, uh, Mumbu, Philippines had a tanned American base fund on there. There is an air base and a naval base. Both are designed, to, designed against China and the Soviet Far East. And the Soviet Union had no law. You know, there were, there were uh, no proof about it, but it has been said there are nuclear weapons were there. Uh, you know station there at that time against mm. the stop the spread of communism adivar njavara dokka mati now there are no bases there but base mati nishesham philippine oru pudhi oru karar oppittu american aayittu ipo 9 am philippine military stations le american arms and american soldiers are based so there is a, there is an agreement between philippines and america for uh, mutual defense an attack on one is considered the attack on other so therefore they will come to the aid of each other um but she chinaide dharanayile china wanted to take taiwan back yeah. and uh, and it said you know you will use force if necessary to take it and 2027 four years from now has been set as a mentioned as a deadline by which they want to take taiwan america is determined to protect taiwan to but how far america will go to defend taiwan i am not quite sure i think in you know, the last moment america will will back out and taiwan will go to china <laughs> this is a fear i have this is a good theory i have because uh, the but uh, what is happening now as a result is uh, the logam mulavan randayite divide aan autocrats and democracies mm. what is likely to happen in southeast asia in in south china sea whether it will become a war between 
autocracy and democracy i am not quite sure but the possibility is there and um, the india naturally is aligning with the democratic countries mm. in that issue that way i think india is taking the right mm. policy for its own interest um you know we have signed with the quad and uh, now a new you know joint uh, uh, military exercise and all like that we we, we have with uh, japan and uh, australia america and that sort of areas which to me is a is a noticeable deviation from the former policy of uh, neutrality and you now keep america more than arms like the way like that uh, so to my mind that is a natural and uh, sensible shift okay 2024 le election yeah ivide adu ivadta india le oru eagerly waiting aayittulla oru sangathiyana yeah endu sambhavikkum എന്ത് സംഭവിക്കരുത് എന്നൊക്കെ നമ്മൾ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുക ആലോചിക്കുകയൊക്കെ ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു സംഗതിയാണ് ഈ പത്ത് വർഷത്തെ മോഡി റെജീം ഇന് എന്ത് സംഭവിക്കും രാഷ്ട്രീയമായിട്ടും സാമ്പത്തികമായിട്ടും എന്ത് സംഭവിക്കാം ഐ കൻ നോട്ട് കമൺ സെൻസിബിളി ഇറ്റ് കാരണം ഞാൻ ഈ ഇന്ത്യൻ പോളിറ്റിക്സ് അത്ര കാര്യമായിട്ട് നോക്കാറില്ല ഐ ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദി ഇന്ത്യൻ പോളിറ്റിക്സ് ഫ്രം എ ഡിസ്റ്റൻസ് ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നത് എന്താ agreeing we must get a more neutral government uh, if uh, modi can persuade bjp to give up this hindu rashtra policy and become a, a, a truly neutral uh, madhyadar rashtra a <coughs> policy like kondu varan pattuvanengil i am very happy for that thing it doesn't matter whether it is a congress or modi or uh, you know amatni or who were comes into power as long as we maintain that policy we are a secular state adu nirthan pattu nullengil there should be all right but pattilla nu evident aanallo yeah all the proof is against it <laughs> so i am not happy about that situation um, how can it uh, it be made into that thing because it's, uh, you see we, we we are the most populous country in the world indian we nammal nerthe samsarichile oru diversity ide oru kendram aayittla india yeah engan ini oru ee parayna modi sarkarine ee policies il kondu nela nikkan pattu adu adha inde oru natural edathilekku pakshe adu ennu cheyale ende dharanayile ee our unity is in our diversity and that is our strength as it is in the educated class intellectual class thinking people okay you know middle class and upward which are a large number of our population okay. are not and they have no clue about what is that is a belt too alle ah the hindi belt is all about that so avare engana react cheyu avarude etra maatram nammalum parnjalum will they react to that thing then there is money politics you see okay so i'm not quite sure about that nammal po hong kong stand il avada nikka na kadhayile adhe avada nu pinnella todarchi engane irunnu hong kong nu stand il nu vittadinu shesham enikku bhagya vasal contact ok ullathu undu i got a 3 months consultancy with uh, unicef united hmm. nations children's fund promoting one of their uh, world assemblies in this part of the world It's traveling around and talking to influential people important people about it adu gelu njan tirichu hong kong il vannu and there was a publishing company owned by an indian guy uh, magazine publishing they wanted to start a business publication so he hired me to as the founding editor of that magazine so i did that and i worked with him for four the two years then i broke with him because uh, he did not uh, maintain his side of the bargain so i don't want to go into the details of it so in disagreement i, I left and finally it uh, i had to take him to court mm. and all that and i won the case 
uh, after that uh, there is a, a company called database asia hmm. this is long before computerization but this company the guy who started that company had a vision about it. he's a computer geek had a vision about you know, how computerization will come into dominate our, our life so he had already bought uh, large borrow machines and storing it, to store information data input into it and the company is feeding information to local clients lawyers accountants business information so avare apuzhtheke enne eduthu vechu njan ee idinu rajivichu kazhinjittu endu theyichu angotta avarku oru oru there are seven division in that company hmm. one is a publishing division adinte head data ne eduthu book publishing ah illa illa data data okay, okay. publishing so adinte head data publishing division the head data avare enikku oru jooli thannu so i did that uh, for a uh, few months അപ്പം അതിനിടയിൽ ആ കമ്പനിയിൽ തന്നെ ഡയറക്ടർ ബോർഡ് ലെവൽ ഭയങ്കര ബഹളങ്ങളൊക്കെ നടക്കുന്നുണ്ടായിരുന്നു വഴക്കമൊക്കെ നടക്കുന്നുണ്ടായിരുന്നു കമ്പനി വിസ് അപ് ടു ഐ ബ്രോസ് ഇൻ ഡെറ്റ് സോ ഐ ഡിറ്റ് നോട്ട് നോ അറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ആം ഇറ്റ് വാസ് സോ സോ ഡെറ്റ് ഇഡൻ കമ്പനി പക്ഷെ ആ കുഴപ്പമൊക്കെ തീർന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് എൻ്റെ മാനേജിങ് ചെയർമാൻ എന്നെ വിളിച്ചിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞു ദേസ് എ റവല്യൂഷൻ revolt in the board uh, in the board meeting many directors have resigned or thrown out and uh, they wanted me to take over as the managing director of the company i did not accept managing director's position i said no i don't want to be managing director because when you take managing director you become fiduciary responsibility financial responsibility which i did not want to so i designed my own title a chief executive <laughs> so so basically i run the company but i am not uh, financially responsible for the company uh, you know nobody can sue me for that i did that for a while but this company going from from debt crisis to debt crisis like that later on i left that company then i set up my own desktop publishing okay company providing the outer law firms and any corporation avarku avarku news letter o nagalo publish cheyanangale naan set up edu enke type you know writing editing you know writing they will do the editing and uh, designing and all like that in you know, our establishment backing ende kude oru ആ ഡേറ്റബേസ് കമ്പനിയിൽ എൻ്റെ എക്സിക്യൂട്ടീവ് അസിസ്റ്റൻ്റ് ആയിട്ട് ജോലി ചെയ്ത ഒരു ഇംഗ്ലീഷുകാർ ഒരു സ്ത്രീ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു അവർ ഇതിൻ്റെ പാർട്ട്ണറായിട്ട് വന്നു അവരുടെ ഭർത്താവ് ഒരു ബാങ്കറാണ് അത് ഞാൻ ചെയ്തു പിന്നെ ആ കമ്പനി വികസിപ്പിച്ചു അത് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് എൻ്റെ ഒരു ഫിലിപ്പീൻസുള്ള ഒരു ഫ്രണ്ട് ഈ അയാൾക്ക് ഇതുമാതിരി കമ്പനി അവിടെ ഉണ്ടാക്കണമെന്ന് ഒരു ആഗ്രഹം ഉണ്ടായി അപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് ഞാൻ അപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് എൻ്റെ ആദ്യത്തെ വിവാഹം പിരിഞ്ഞു എൻ്റെ രണ്ട് കുട്ടികൾ എൻ്റെ കൂടെ ഉണ്ട് അവർ എൻ്റെ കൂടെ തന്നെ താമസിച്ചു അവർ അപ് ടു എയ്റ്റീൻ ദേവിൽ ദേവിൽ ആറ്റ് ബി അണ്ടർ മൈ കസ്റ്റഡി അവർ എയ്റ്റീനൊക്കെ ആയി അവർ രണ്ടുപേരും കാനഡയിലേക്ക് പോയി അവരുടെ അമ്മ കാനഡയിലായിരുന്നു ചൈനീസ് വുമൺ ബട്ട് ഷി എമിഗ്രേറ്റഡ് ടു കാനഡ അവരുമൊക്കെ പോയപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ ഒറ്റയ്ക്ക് ആയപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് ഫിലിപ്പീൻകാരൻ ഫ്രണ്ട് പറഞ്ഞു വാട്ട് ഈസ് ദർ ഫോർ ഇറ്റ് ടു കീപ്പ് ഇൻ കീപ്പ് ഇൻ ഹോങ്കോങ് come to philippines mm. so nani company and the english partner nadathanayittu kodutittu nan hong kong philippines like okay. poi angane ane philippines la thaasu thodangidu okay adinu munbe nan philippines la povumayirunnu appo nan aadhyamayittu philippines la poyidu marcos martial law declared in 1972 oh. uh, i like the country because uh, it is very much like kerala yes, coconut country when i told them we are a coconut country and kerala means land of coconut they could not believe normally <laughs> filipino said we never heard of it i said you come to my country and you will see it <laughs> anyway so i i when i first saw the country i liked it so much njan annu thana thirumanichu enikku ivide vannu kore kaalam thamasikkanam cinema thonanalla kore kaalam 
പിന്നെ മാർക്കോസ് മാർഷൽ ലോ ഡിക്ലേഷൻ ഞാൻ രണ്ട് തവണ മാർക്കോസ് ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് ഫോർമർ പ്രസിഡന്റ് മാർക്കോസ് പാലസ് മലക്കലാങ് പാലസ് സോ ഈ ബിക്കെയിം വെരി ഫ്രണ്ട്ലി വിത്ത് മീ ആൻഡ് ഡെവലപ്ഡ് എ ഗുഡ് റപ്പോർട്ട് വിത്ത് ദി ഫിലിപ്പിൻ ഗവൺമെൻറ്റ് ഓൾ ദോ ഐ വാസ് ക്രിറ്റിക്കൽ ഓഫ് ദ ഗവൺമെൻറ്റ് മാർക്കോസ് ഇംസെൽഫ് ടോൾ മീ വൺസ് യു ആർ മൈ വേസ്റ്റ് എനിമി ഔട്ട് സൈഡ് ദിസ് കൺട്രി നോട്ട് എനിമി വേസ് ക്രിറ്റിക് വേസ് ക്രിറ്റിക് ഔട്ട് സൈഡ് മൈ കൺട്രി സോ ബട്ട് വി ഗോട്ട് ലോങ് വെരി വെൽ ദാറ്റ് വേ ദെൻ and i went back to live there as a, to set up this uh, tap setting mm. book desktop publishing company for my filipino friend aa samayathu avade oru oru publishing family und avare they they used to publish a, a weekly magazine called the free press mm. which is highly respected journal ayalande magan you know he went to harvard and studied law and came back and a good writer good speaker he wanted to start a newspaper so i had on that i had ever seen that the varanu can you find a foreign consultant to advise me hmm. on setting up a newspaper abhi uh, friend had a foreign consultant the varan birthdayku ningal ek american consultant hello nia we are the ബെസ്റ്റ് ഫോറിൻ നേഴ്സസ് ഉണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഇയാൾ എന്നാലൊന്ന് നോക്കണം സ്വപ്പം സമയം പിടിക്കും പക്ഷേ വേണമെങ്കിൽ അമേരിക്കൻ അല്ലാത്തൊരു ഒരു കോമ്പറ്റൻ്റ് ആളെ എനിക്കറിയാം അതിൽ ഇവിടെ താമസിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ഇപ്പോഴും ഈസ് എൻ ഇന്ത്യൻ മോസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ഹിസ് ലൈഫ് ഇസ് നോങ്കോങ് ഐ ഹാഡ് ലിവ്ഡ് ഇൻ നോങ്കോങ് ബൈ ദ ടൈം സം ഫിഫ്റ്റി സിക്സ്റ്റി ഇയേഴ്സ് ലിവ്ഡ് സോ അയാൾ മോസ്റ്റ്ലി ഈസ് ഫ്രം ഹോങ്കോങ് ബട്ട് ഈസ് എൻ ഇന്ത്യൻ സിറ്റിസൺ He is now living in our country. But I said, I didn't do it. He immediately accepted me. I had a consultant that I had to do it. I had to do it. Beginning from typography up to page design and everything. Okay. I created the paper. For the, for the, with the, their editors and all are there. But I got it everything. I have to do it. And the parent? Today. Okay. Today in the new paper. ആ പത്രം ലോഞ്ച് ചെയ്തപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് ഞാൻ വിചാരിച്ചു ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ എൻഡ് ഓഫ് മൈ ജോബ് യു നോ ഐ വിൻ ദ ടു സെറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ പേപ്പർ ഐ സെറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് അപ്പ് ആൻഡ് അത് ലോഞ്ച് ചെയ്തപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് അതിന് ഭയങ്കര പ്രശംസ കിട്ടി ആ പത്രത്തിന് അയാളുടെ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഓരോരുത്തരും ടെലിഫോൺ ചെയ്തു ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ ബെസ്റ്റ് വി ഹാവ് സീൻ ഇൻ ഫിലിപ്പിൻ ജേർണലിസം യു നോ ആൻഡ് സോ ദേ വെർ ക്വാറ്റ് ഹാപ്പി വിത്ത് ഇറ്റ് ആൻഡ് വേർ എവർ ദേ ഗോ ഫോർ എനി പാർട്ടി ഓർ എനി ദേ ആർ ഇൻവൈറ്റഡ് ടു ദി ഓണർ he will want me to go with him okay. he will introduce me everywhere this is vishwa this is our consultant <laughs> like that uh, that was a, a good feeling then they said you know you also ningalku idile you also know how to run the business side of the operation circulation advertising idokke naan mainstream nadathi kaalathe kariyaanu kaaygalu and accounting i said i know all that thing so 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 why don't you stay with us continue to remain our consultant so i remained as a consultant for a while and then they said uh, they want me to become their general manager so i became general manager i ran that paper for uh, 10 years mm. then uh, i reached the retirement age according to their law i retired uh, then manila times <laughs> the oldest paper in the philippines they took me as a consultant for 6 months okay so i continued along like that and my today newspaper's owner was uh, previously not the present philippine government the former philippine government uh, president duterte's government he was the foreign secretary you know foreign minister now he is the philippines ambassador to britain so namuk nammade ഫിലിപ്പീൻ അംബാസിഡർ മലയാളിയാണ് ശംഭു കുമാരൻ ഐ സോ എൻ ആർട്ടിക്കിൾ റിട്ടൺ ബൈ ശംഭു കുമാർ ആക്ച്വലി സംബഡി ഫ്രം എ ഫ്രണ്ട് ഓഫ് മൈൻ ഫ്രം ട്രിവാൻഡ്രം ഫോർവേഡ് എൻ ദാറ്റ് മീ എൻ ആർട്ടിക്കിൾ റിട്ടൺ ബൈ ഇന്ത്യൻ അംബാസിഡർ ഇൻ ഫിലിപ്പീൻ ശംഭു കുമാരൻ ഇൻ എ ഫിലിപ
<laughs> so I read that thing and I said, oh, this guy, and when I saw Shambhu Kumar, I said, he must be Malayali. <laughs> so, I sent an email to him. I said, I don't know if I'm in the background. I'm in the Mr. Locks in the Today newspaper and the consultant. I don't know. You may not know me. This is my background. Now, if you are free, I would like to come by and visit you, have a chat with you. He quickly responded. He said, I don't know if I'm in the country. Actually, I know everything about you. <laughs> Because Mr. Lockson has told me everything about you and Lockson is so admiringly talked to me about you. And, uh, and uh, Lockson said, you know, Malayalis are the most brilliant people among Indians. <laughs> so, you know, we became immediately, we met and had dinner. He invited me to lunch. So, In this long process, I said, when I started working with uh, Mr. Lockson as a consultant to start the newspaper, I was a single man that my children from the previous marriage went to Canada and I was alone in Philippines. And uh, my personal manager of the company, a Filipino girl, she said to me, Vishwa, you cannot be alone like that. You need a wife. I have the ideal choice for you. Mm. That was his her dentist. Oh. My present wife. <laughs> so I, she introduced us and uh, I liked her. She's here upstairs. Okay. Uh, so... Perinda? The official parent Maria Lourdes. Okay. Sadhana Lukinda Beboth, B-E-B-O-T. Uh, so we met and we liked each other. And very good. She is also a, a divorcee. Okay. Uh, she has two children like I have. So we became an ideal match and we are happy to go. Okay. So I decided to settle down in Philippines. If I did not do that thing, I don't know where I will settle down. I'm not quite sure if I would come back to enter yeah. into Indian politics and Indian life, you know, not that I like it. I think over that period of time, I became misfit in India because I, I cannot enter into journalism. You know, journalism here is uh, deeply interested in politics. And uh, to me, it takes a while to understand the politics, which I left a long time ago. This is a long period of journalism. ജേർണലിസം എന്ന് പറയുന്ന കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ആശയപരമായി തന്നെ മാറിയിട്ടുള്ളത് എന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ടെക്നോളജിക്കലി മാത്രമല്ല അതിൻ്റെ ഒരു ഐഡിയോളജിക്കൽ ബേസിൽ തന്നെ ഇതിൻ്റെ ഒരു കണ്ടൻറ് ബേസ്ഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു സംഗതിയിൽ നിന്ന് മാർക്കറ്റ് ഓറിയൻറ്റഡ് ആയിട്ടും ഒക്കെ എങ്ങനെ ചേഞ്ച് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് നാം മനസ്സിലാക്കി You are an activist media, activist journalist. I don't agree with that. That's not possible also. Yeah, you cannot be an activist and a journalist at the same time. That term was first used to me by a Filipino journalist uh, who was Andy Marcos, martial law, and he's, he's an American citizen. He lives in America. He was working in Washington, in, in, uh, working in Wall Street Journal in, in, in uh, New York. He was visiting Philippines once and I invited him to lunch at my house with an, another friend of his, talking about it and he is the one who used the term activist journalism and he said it's a good thing. And I said, how can activism be good for journalism? He said, no, you are not impartial. To me, it's total impartiality is the issue. You know, That is my attitude about journalism. Okay. I don't support activist journalism. So that, but today's journalism is uh, in uh, many areas. Uh, it became partisan. Not, not journalism as a whole, but there are outstanding examples you know, on the other side. 
then this so called social media came in you know which i i don't use it and i don't follow it very much a social media has become a problem clouding the impartiality and uh, factual reporting of newspapers uh, because quite often reporters and editors get confused about it. this uh, social media as uh, uh, you know things that they spread so journalism has changed everything has to change as time goes goes by so the body changes the trend um i cannot compare how it uh, happened but the state of it in india i cannot you know because i don't i don't, I don't follow what is happening here